This conference will now be recorded. So I'll be sharing my screen. I hope everyone has their installations ready and good to go, guys. So is my screen visible, everyone? Is my screen visible, Sachin, Priya? Yes, it is visible. Great. Yes. Hmm. So, today we will discuss about a concept called as variables. Okay. So, instead of writing public static void main directly, I will type the word main so that it will generate a meta template like this. So, what is the shortcut for typing public typing public static void main main followed by enter key so instead of typing the big big lines of course there are some shortcuts we have in IntelliJ we can use all the shortcuts for the demonstration sake of what I'll do is I'll just remove it once again I'll type the word main so that you can see the values that are present under the console now what is a variable variable is nothing but temporary storage of value so what do you mean by temporary storage of value yes. like whenever a rain falls we hold the rain water in your dam or in your tankers or with the rain water will be stored in your underground so it's like a temporary storage that means what whenever the water is stored in the underground some other people will use that underground water and use it for the utilize it for their safe right so same thing variables is like a temporary storage of value once the program execution is done execution is completed the way the data present in the variables will be vanished vanished or trashed okay once the pro the scope of the variable is only within the runtime. That means as long as the program executes only, the variables have a life. Once the program execution is completed, then the variables do not have any life. So before we go into the concept of variables, so what are the different data types present? Primitive data type, non-primitive data type. So what do you mean by primitive data types? It's just like how you have English alphabets like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, little Z, or you have numbers from 0 to 9. So the basic fundamentals of forming anything. So like this, what are the fundamental data types in Java that comes under primitive data type? Int, string, boolean, char, byte, long, short int string boolean byte character float and double so these are the eight primitive data types that we have it in java clear everyone priya sachin ram jagannath vashish clear yes 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 uh, what do you mean by uh, once the program is executed uh, the variable like, will get thrashed no, I mean, like whenever I declare, declare a variable, like suppose A is the value. So the value of A will be only useful during the runtime. Once the program execution is done, the, the, whatever the contents of variable A is there, it will be removed. Like it will not be present at all. Uh, it will be vanished. It will okay. be killed. It will be trashed. It's just like once you have, once the work with that person is completed, don't need that person, right? You just remove him off your payroll. Like that, like a concept of contract employee, remember? Yeah, that's that's very uh, relevant example these days. So that is why I link the same to variables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry if it has sounded offensive for any of you. I'm really sorry, but it's just an example. So primitive data type. Non-primitive data types include. Okay, a string won't be there. I'm, my bad. My bad. Int care boolean byte short long float double one two three four five six seven eight yeah and then non the non primitive data type strings lists arrays etc the list keeps on going okay 
a non permutative data set the list keeps on going on and on and on for life long <laughs> okay so before we discuss discuss anything further string is the only non primitive data type that is present in the object class so what do you mean by object class object class is the parent class of all the data types got it got it everyone is this clear guys so far sachin tejasvi yes. subhash yes yes priya yeah yes what are the rules to be followed while declaring the variables first rule is start a variable with a small letter okay start a variable with a small letter then it should not start with a number or a special character we cannot use any white spaces between the variable names use and use underscore as an alternative to white space while declaring the variable okay clear everyone is the points clear so far what is third point so third point is like if you want to give like names like what is suppose suppose you have mr patel like suppose whenever you declare a variable you cannot say mr space patel like that you cannot give it so when you are giving a white spaces between the variable names is not allowed if you want to give if you want to use this white spaces for sure instead of white spaces you can use underscores got it got yeah, it bro yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yes sir so java keywords cannot be used as variable names so what are this java keywords this java keywords are something which holds some purpose in the programming language so what are those program what are those java keywords that you can have so these are some reserved keywords in java because the purpose of this keywords are something else they have some meaning they have some purpose to execute and if you use this names as part of your variable name then it will throw an error these names are not allowed to be used got it got it everyone yes sir yes. you should not yes. use this 57 names as part of your variable name because these words have some meaning these words have some purpose in java So I'm just sharing the link list of keywords, Java keywords that you not you should not use as far as variable names. Okay. Now we know what are the rules that we need to use for declaring a variable. So what is the syntax of declaring a variable? Data type variable name. Okay. Or we say in day one, char b two, float c three, double d four, byte e five, long f six. Okay, got it. Got it, guys. Yes. Uh, yes. Can you also explain uh, what these data types are like? Yeah, yeah. I'll be explaining first. Yeah, I'll explain everything. First of all, you understood the syntax as a question. Right. I mean, from a syntactical standpoint of view, understood this value, Sachin. Yes. Yes, I got that.
so once this is done okay then what i will do okay first of all we will see what is this care means what accepts a single value like okay got it got it everyone yes like it yes like a single value of string like string will no, be a word but it will be the character yeah single value anything like single value only only single letter or single digit or a single special character or a white space like that got it priya so character means not only alphabets anything anything number single digit number single special character or a white space or a small letter or a capital letter all this counts okay boolean means accept true or false as the values so when i say a byte accepts a range of values from minus 128 to 127 okay short means accepts a range of values from minus 32768 to 32767 when i say an integer accepts a range of values from minus 2 power 31 to 2 power 31 minus 1 okay accepts a range of values from minus 2 power 63 to 2 power 63 minus 1 so when i say float accepts up to five significant digits what do you mean by significant digits number of values number of digits accepted after the decimal point is just like if i say 45.21432 that means after the decimal digit i can accept only five significant digits in float okay got it everyone got this thing guys yes yes all the syntaxes sachin priya subhashish tejasvi mr patel clear yes yeah, yeah. So when I say double D four, access up to sixteen significant digits. So now, Sachin, you have understood what are the purpose of different different data types? Yes, I mean it would be more uh, uh, understandable when we put them to yes. use in some examples. Yeah, yeah, we'll be using variables is like bread and butter in programming. You will never escape. Yeah. That. So just have given you a theoretical part of what is the purpose of different variables what are the different ranges that you can have so when i say a1 equal to minus okay b2 equal to some file like this c3 equal to so whenever whenever we use float we need to mention the letter f at the last to indicate that it is a float value got it okay e5 means minus 130 if you see here if i try to exceed the range of the byte here then it will throw an error like this so it is saying like required type is byte but it is accepting a integer value that is that means it's accepting a range of value that is greater than its original one so it is saying like cast expression to byte or something like that okay so always maintain your numbers within the limit okay so if you give some value like this it will go out of range like that
if you see 49,255. So what is the highest value of minus 32,768? Okay. Here everyone, how can we declare the variables like this? Yep. Okay. Uh, I have a question though. Uh, for float values, uh, if we don't put F, um, then it will be and then it, will, it. it might take as double value. Like it's just like an indicator to compiler that okay, this is the float value and it can accept up to five significant digits. That is the difference. Okay, and if we you will try to print it bef uh, without putting the float, without putting it the will F. Work. It will work. It will work, okay. but internally it might uh, trigger to double data type also. From float, it can go to double data type to give more design. Ah, okay. 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 Got it. Internally, the architecture will be that way. Like it has exceeded, so I'll, anything is a decimal value, right? You got my point? Yeah. So that's the thing. Apart from that, nothing else. Yeah. Okay. So this is how we declare a variable. If you want to print, you can directly print the variables like this. Clear? Priya, Sachin, Subhashish. Yes. Um, yes. And for CAR, it should be under single quotes only. Yes, yes, it should be under single quotes. Okay. For a character, the value should be present under the single quote. Value should be present inside single quote. Okay. Here, everyone. Yes. So if I want to, yeah, yeah. If I want to run this program file, like if I want to run this specific program file, how do I run it? You can see the play button here, right? You can click on this play button. If you click on this play button, the code will run from here. Instead of doing right click run, you can see the play button here. By clicking on this play button, the program will run automatically. Okay. Clear everyone. Where is the play button? Here on the left hand side. You see the play button on your left hand side? Okay, so run now, run now. Yeah, Similarly this play added. button signifies run. Okay. And also on the uh, top right corner, right? right yeah, side. you can use that. You can use here also. Like top right, it will be like, it will have the play button for the previous execution. Like if you want to execute this class, you can go to the play button directly. Got it? Okay. Like instead of doing right click run and all the stuff, if you if you want to ease your life, you can use this play button here so that it'll run that program in that file. Okay. Clear? Yes. Yeah. So this is how I print the value to the variables. Okay. Now here you can use calculators because we are performing some arithmetic operations, which are huge in number. Mathematical operation value is Here. So here what we are doing previously in the previous class we are used to just give us strings only strings or some mathematical operations. So here we can concatenate string to an this operations by using the plus symbol we can join two strings or two different objects. Got it? Got it, everyone? Gone are the days where you can use the normal print statement only for strings. We can also append the data with the original statement using the plus symbol. Got it, guys? Got it, everyone? Yes. 
Sachin. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, so could you calculate the value yeah. for me for this arithmetic operation? Can you scroll up the screen? Yeah, the values that. are already there. The values are already there in the screen. Okay, in console. Okay. Okay, in console it is there. Okay. You can see the values now. So guys, what's the answer? Can anyone tell me? Guys, are you there? Sachin, Priya, Surabhi, Jagannath? Yeah. Answer? Uh, not sure if the answer is correct, but I'm getting like minus 320235.585504. Okay, can you just give me two, three decimal digits? Uh, minus 320235.58. Hmm. How about others? How about others, guys? I got minus three two zero two three four point four one four four. Okay. I I got minus three three two one point. It's three two minus three two zero two three four point four one four four. That is four minus three two zero two three four point four one. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, okay, that's the answer. Clear? Yes. Can you can you show how it? Okay. So. So here, what we are doing? What is the value of a one? What is the value of a one minus three two zero three five? What is the value of c three minus, minus five two zero two three five? Yeah, minus five point four five into what is d four five thirty two point three two five? Like make it three two five three two five five divided by what is G7 minus 4955? So what I'll do, I'll take the help of my Calci because the values are too big for me. So first I have to do division, okay? So what I'll do, 532.32, 32, 
फाइव थ्री टू डबल फाइव डिवाइडेड बाय फोर नाइन डबल फाइव ओके सो व्हाट इज द आंसर यू गॉट माइनस जीरो पॉइंट वन सेवन समथिंग लाइक माइनस जीरो पॉइंट वन सेवन फोर राइट ऐसा नो सो व्हाट आई विल डू माइनस थर्टी टू जीरो थ्री फाइव माइनस फाइव पॉइंट फोर फाइव इंटू जीरो पॉइंट वन सेवन वन जीरो सेवन ओके फर्स्ट आई डू द डिविजन देन आई विल डू द मैथ ओके सो व्हाट आई डू इंटू फाइव फाइव पॉइंट फोर फाइव सो व्हाट विल बी द वैल्यू माइनस जीरो पॉइंट फाइव एट फाइव 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 ओके माइनस थर्टी टू थाउजेंड थर्टी फाइव माइनस जीरो पॉइंट एट फाइव 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 जीरो पॉइंट फाइव एट फाइव फाइव so minus into minus is plus right here minus is there here another minus is there minus into minus is plus okay so so 32035 so what is the answer here clear guys yes sir yeah got it now so most of your people have missed this operation minus into minus is plus Got it? Yes. Yeah, I missed that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is how we append the variables and we assign the data, and this is how we can perform mathematical operations using the variables. Using character as part of the operation. So whenever you want to perform any mathematical operations, you have to always surround this within parentheses. Okay? When you surround this with parentheses, then the Java compiler will understand like, okay, this is there are some operations performed within these brackets. Once this is performed, then I have to attach this value to the existing print statement. Okay? So can you tell me the value of this line number fifty-five, guys? Can you tell me the value of line number fifty-five? Yes, what's the answer? Hi Sansha. Hi Sansha. You have joined a bit late today. Yeah, actually I was in different call, so that's what actually I joined late. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Are you able to hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. You are not late, but you can solve the question that is present in line number fifty-five.
Rahul, I didn't understand this one. Okay, so like since uh, I missed the class. What was the question? Was it to class? Sorry, Sahinja, I couldn't hear you. Actually, I was late to the class, right? I didn't understand this thing. Okay, okay. So the, we have discussed the concept of variables. Okay. We have discussed the concept of variables and we have uh, 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 performing some questions in with respect to variables. So I just wanted to go through the recording ones. Okay. Sure, we'll go there. We'll, we'll go to the recording. Yeah. So Sachin, your answer was 991237461. Yeah. Like this is a exponent operator. Yeah. There was some exponent operation and I guess you are close to it. 7461123 Yeah. Sachin, you are absolutely you are almost close by. That's right. Yes, my answer is 991237. Okay. Double nine one two three seven four four three. Yeah, yeah, that close by. Everyone is giving me close by answer. It's one, two, three, seven, five. Can you once explain me like exact answer we didn't get right? Can you please? So here it will take a exponential operation, guys. So what is the value of B two? Five. So Sachin, what did you take in place of five? Like character B is five, right? So I've taken the value of B as five only. B two as five only. Sachin. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I did that wrong. Great. So whenever we perform any characters in arithmetic operation, we need to take the ASCII value. We need to take the ASCII value of the character whenever we are performing any arithmetic operations. Okay. So how do we get to know what are the ASCII values? So what is the ASCII value of phi? What is the ASCII value of phi? It's 53. Okay. ASCII value of phi is 53. Okay. So what is this ASCII value? Like how we understand phi, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4. Java understands this ASCII values. When we say phi, it will understand as 53. Got it? Clear? Yes. yes. Okay. So here, what is the value of 5? 53. 53 minus, what is C3 here? Minus 4.45. Plus F6. This is the F6 value. Minus E5. Minus 9. Okay, then what is the operation that we need to perform? 53 minus 5.45 plus 991237453 plus 9. Okay, so let me perform this arithmetic operations. 53, okay, first we need to do addition. 9912374537453 plus 9 plus 53 minus 5.45 okay here everyone 9912375095 since the number is big for java to express it has given e power 8 to the power 8 okay So this is the actual answer, which is absolutely right here. E power 8 means what? Exponent to the power 8. Since it was unable to display this value like this properly, 
it was saying exponential to the power of 8. So that means what? When I say exponential to the power of 8, 9.912375 to the power of, I mean, 10 power h. I can do okay so instead of printing this big value it has changed the values like this clear clear everyone sachin priya ram yes Ravi. yes mm, yes uh, why why didn't we take the uh sky value of other characters because only for character only we have to do that rest of the things remains the same so whenever you're involving oh, any okay. character with arithmetic operation only, that ASCII value will be taken. I have made ah, my okay, point okay, here. Right, right, right. Other things you can take it directly by default. So with this, you understood what is what, right? Everyone? Yes. So you don't want to use any like append the values like this something like that like if you want to append the data to the existing print statement we are using plus symbol now what is the alternate we can use when i say system dot out dot format so print f sorry print f so what i'll say I will say percentage D comma this is my value so that means what I need not put any plus symbol directly there and all the stuff so what we are using here we are saying percentage D percentage D represents a number okay percentage D represents a number guys clear Is this clear, everyone? Yes. So instead of using this plus operation to append the data to the existing one, we can use percentage D here. Percentage D represents a number as part of the regular expression, which we can discuss at a later point of time. Okay. Instead of using this plus and all, you can use the system order print of F using characters as part of the arithmetic operation percentage D. Clear? Clear everyone? Any doubts? Yes. Subhashish, Ahana, Surabhi, Ram, Sahansha, Priya, Sachin, clear? Uh, sorry, can you repeat it? Like, it represents a number, but what number? Like, we perform the arithmetic sum here, right? Whatever the operation, whatever the value we get here, whatever the value I get here, I'll put it back again here, okay? When I say percentage D here, what I'm telling, whatever the value you get here, you please add it here back again. Got it? Uh, you add it to the percentile D? Yeah, like instead of percentage D, put this value. That is what I'm trying to tell. Just a moment. Sorry, just a moment. Okay, so when you want to 
display a decimal value, you can use percentage 0.5f. So when you say 0.5 is how many significant digits you want? Okay. Percentage f represents a decimal number. Got it? With how many significant digits you want to print this float value, you can mention like this. If I say 1, it will print the decimal with a decimal value with one single value. Got it? Got it guys? Got it Priya? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So this uh, system order printf will be a bit tricky one. But for starters what I will show you another example is. So hello world. My name is percentile s. So what will be the output here? Hello world. My name is Priya. So instead of percentage s. Priya will be added here while printing the statement. So what we are telling. So in this line of code, I'm accepting a string. So what is the string I want to print? Priya. Got it? Yeah. Instead of putting the plus symbol, like previously yeah, instead what you of plus, to... it is we are putting the percentile. Percentile. So that you need not remember where to put the plus symbol and all exactly. Okay. This yeah. is an alternative. Reference the string. So it's like, and my profession is percentage S. Got it? I can say automation engineer. So while it prints the program, it will take the values from here. Got it? Hello, world, you, my can name you print here. it? Okay, okay. Yeah. Can you run it and. Okay, understood. I printed it. So if you want to print a new line, you can use slash in here at the last for the reference. Got it? Got it? Yes. Uh, Rahul, a question about uh, float. Uh, mm -hmm. So you said that we're using 0.1f, percentage 0.1f. So if we would have used yes. 0.2f or 0.3f, it would print uh, two decimals or three decimals after the... Yes, uh... yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So instead of putting all this plus plus and stuff, if you want to avoid all those plus, like if, whenever you're using a plus operation, you need to put it precisely right. Like if I want to write the same statement using the traditional approach, hello world. My name is like if I say name equal to Priya string profession equal to automation engineer. Okay. Got it? Got it, everyone? Yes, but the, the pluses is, they are confusing, you know. Plus, yeah. mean yeah. plus and Now you say, right? So in, in order to avoid those confusion, this is looks more simpler than that, right, Priya? Yeah. yeah. Plus is nothing like where, but You know where, Mr. where Mr. my value changes in the statement. Yes, I answer, sorry. I lost you. Yeah. Uh, plus is nothing but concatenation, right? Yeah, it's a concatenation. Okay. Oh, Priya, so you hope you got my point, right? Yeah, yeah, I understood. I understood. Like it's up to you whether you want to use mm -hmm. plus or whether you're comfortable in using this printf. Like if you feel like putting the pluses in the middle is confusing, right? Like once I say plus again, you have to use plus double apostrophe, right? So it's up to you. How do you use it? Got it? Yeah. Uh, Rahul, is there any other concatenation operator other than the plus sign? Plus is the concatenation. Java recognizes plus as a concatenation. 
Uh, I remember when I used to study C and C plus uh, plus. They used to C C plus plus doesn't act. The, the C oh, okay, C plus okay. plus is different. That is not object oriented programming, right? That's a subjective programming. That's a that's a whole different role okay. there. Okay. So it might be same in all object oriented programs. Yes, like Python, Python C sharp, anywhere you go, it's the same. So plus this thing, that everything thing remains the same. Yeah. This remains the same, but whatever you are saying, printf, this concept only remains in Java only. Okay. Yeah. This printf concept only is present in Java. It's not present in any other programming language. Okay. Yeah. If you learn this, it's global for all kinds of programming language, like plus u for appending the data. Okay. Yeah, you got it? Yeah. So this is what variables is all about. This is how you append the data. This is how you perform mathematical operations. And this is how you assign the values. Everyone is clear so far? Yeah. Good to go, guys. Yep. So we can discuss a small concept called as character concepts very small concept it doesn't take much of your time so when i say a character c equal to r so so i'm checking whether the given character is in upper case or not returns true if the above character is in capital letter returns true else false so what is the output what is the output false Yes. Is it clear, everyone? What does this function do? Is this clear, everyone? So, for people who don't know what is uppercase, uppercase means capital letter. When I say lowercase, it is small letter. Clear? Now tell me whether line number 17 is true or false, guys. Pia, Ram, Subhashish, Jagannath. It's true. No, true. Yeah. So the f function which we are using, is it, it's returning a boolean output yes yes it's a boolean value that is why it's i'm saying returns true returns false and all how do we identify uh, whether a function would return a boolean or a any other sort okay. of value so if you you know what is the function and the concept if you want to know what is the return type of any method that we are using just control click on this method you will see what is the return type here you will see what is the method returning here. Well, if you want to know what is return type and all, just need to wait for a while so that you will get to know what is the return type. Okay. Okay. Questions here? Yeah, yeah. Control and click uh, Control while and click hovering over press. that particular. Yeah. Okay. If you press, you will get what is the exact data type used here. You know, right? Once you see the data type, you'll understand what is what. Okay. Got it. But actually, you should not, I mean, for the first time, you can see like this, but over practice, you should remember all this. Okay. Given character yeah. is a letter or not. Got it? Letter, or you can say alphabet. So, what is the output? Line number 21? True. Okay. 
checking whether the given character is a number or not. Okay. Clear? Clear um, question, Rahul. So after line number 21 is executed, the value of variable I character C is null. Okay. I can reuse. Okay. I can reuse the values. Okay. So after 21, variable. the value is null. No, it's not null. The value of C is same R only, but instead of R, I'm reassigning the value to 4. Like oh, it's reassigned. Okay. I'm assigning the value. I'm reassigning the values. So in the variables, okay, and... I forgot to mention one more thing. Variables can be reused. But if okay. you reuse it twice, then it won't take the second option because it's like uh, it, there's a preference, right? Like if you are overwriting it. Yeah, I'm just overwriting it. So when I say C equal to 4, from the next lines of code, it will take the value as 4. Before this, the value will be R. After this, whenever you're trying to refer the character C, the value will be 4. After line number 23, if you're trying to refer this character C, the value will be 4. Before line 23, the value will be small r. Got it, Priya? Can you run once and get the... We can see the output. Clear? Okay, four. So it was checking whether this this given character is a number or not. So since this character is a number, it was written true. Got it? Okay. And after reassigning, we don't need to. I mean, in line number twenty-three, we need to. Uh, we don't need to define the data type either. No, no, no. We've no need defined it once. All the declaration is happened here. Once the declaration happened okay. here, you can reuse the theme here. Okay. And and what if I define the data type as integer here? So will the data type change? No. Where you want to change the data in type line number twenty-three? No, no, it doesn't work. Or like yeah, in twenty-three. See, it will not accept because yeah. two variable name two you should not have two variables having the same name in the same class. Okay. Okay. So we'll give an error have, basically. Yeah, okay. We, we can have, change the. Uh, I mean, we can't change the data type. We can just change the variable. I mean. Um, yeah, if you want to use a new variable, you can use a new variable with any data type. But we should not have two variable names, two variables having the same name in the same, same class. Same data type. Hmm. Like you can use same data type with different variable. Like if you want, I can say cat d equal to 5. You can use like this. And pass it here. Got it? Yeah, but C is already defined as char data type. Yes. So it cannot re be re redefined as int, as you just said. Yes, you cannot you cannot redefine as int. You cannot do it anything. The same variable can be used at multiple places instead of saying char c at all the time. Like you know, right? Only one character is more than sufficient for me to run the code. Yeah. You can reuse your variables like that. You cannot change the data type of the variable in the runtime. Okay. You cannot change the data type like that. Clear? Yeah. Now, suppose you want to convert this character to an integer. What I can do? Int d equal to character dot get numeric value of c. Got it? Character dot get numeric value is the function that is used to convert a character to an integer. Clear? Yeah. This is how you need to change the data types of a variable. You cannot simply play around by changing some or the other. You have to change it using the help of the functions and you can write the code like that. Got it? How do we oh, know the yeah. functions like methods? Functions you will know by practice. That is why you guys are here. That is why I'll give you all the list of functions that is used here. So you need to remember and practice all of this. Okay. Can you give that list? Can you send the list? Yeah, of this, this code file will be shared, right? Yeah. See, for every library, there are multiple methods, but we should know only the methods which are useful for our regular purpose, not all the methods. Okay, Priya? Yeah, okay. Yes, I enjoy that. Go ahead. No, no, nothing. Here. Yeah. Now I say C equal to white space like this. C 
to why java is a very vast library and it is very difficult to remember all the functions so i am be teaching you which is the right function for you learn for automation so it is whether the given character is a white space or not if it is a white space it will return true else it returns false okay got it everyone yeah So you can see uh, you've seen right i'm reusing the same variable at in all the points i have not declared any variable a separate variable name yes or no converts the character to a capital letter got it got it everyone got this point everyone But the small case, lower case character is all that is lower case, right? C is lower case, right? It yeah. will return so to the upper case, case, right? Yeah, it will convert to upper case like this. See? Okay. Now suppose you have like this. Okay. The same thing happens. Got it? Got it, guys? Yep. Yes. So, if you want to convert this string to a character, how will I do? Character dot to string. converts the character to a string here yeah. got it everyone yes So when I say comparison of characters, so I will say char d equal to four, char k equal to four, char. Uh, Rahul, is there a sorry? Is there a terminology for uh, uh, when we are changing the data type of one variable to the other? Is there a terminology for that? I'm just no, forgetting. No, for characters, this is the concept. When you deal with others, there's another concept. I will let you. We will learn those also. Oh, okay. Like the my my scenarios. Whenever I want to change the character to a string, character to integer, character to string, these are the methods I have. When you want to change the string from you know, string to integer, string to double, that is another concept. Okay. 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 Like I I just Different. just trying to remember if there is a generic term for that uh, something like type casting or something Nothing like that. Like type casting okay. is there but the type casting has multiple likes there's upward down cast type casting and downward type casting that is something else okay 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 got it so character that compare k comma l so returns minus 1 if both the characters are not same okay returns zero if both characters are same when i say same this value of k is 4 value of l is 5 it's not matching so that is why it is returning minus 1 if it is matching it will return zero like if i say 4 comma 4 it will return zero got it Got it, everyone. Yeah. So sometimes it returns plus one if the starting character is greater than the ending character. So what do you mean by that? If the value of k is greater than value of l, then only it will return one. So that means what? 
if the ascii value of k and ascii value of k is greater than ascii value of l then it will print 1 if the ascii value of k is less than ascii value of l then it will return minus 1 got it why does it take ascii value now like when you are already because giving... you are using the compare concept right so uh, what i have told you we understand normal characters but java understands ascii values right uh, uh, only for this uh, compare function it uses ascii yeah yeah while comparison it will compare on the basis of ascii values okay okay clear yes i guess there are a lot of functions here we don't need all these functions a lot of functions guys so just need, need not use any function it's totally fine okay So there are a lot of functions which you don't need it as of now we need this much only for automation here yeah? here everyone can you all practice till here for us yes or no rahul what uh, if we can uh, control plus click means what we will do what we can see rahul so control click click means you can see the internal logic that is being applied here like what is the logic that java has applied what is the return type and all the stuff okay Okay. Like if you want to explore the Java function document of what is the what is the purpose of that logic, you can use control click so that you can go inside that method and see what is the purpose of it. You can get some details about the logic behind this method and all the stuff. Okay. Okay. That's for your exploration sake. Like how if you want to explore, you can explore it that way also. Clear? So Clear everyone? So, can we stop the class for now and tomorrow we will discuss on strings? Uh, yeah? Yes, uh, I have a question regarding installations. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Maven, uh, you asked to set up bin through terminal actually, once we downloaded yeah. this file. But you know, mm -hmm. when I was searching, I got like it, it was giving me an option to. Uh, like using brew brew install maven so when i did that it's saying that uh, uh, automatically it sets up the path also but yeah, I yeah. Know automatically it... it will set up the path then that's not an issue for you can can you see i uh, like i put it in the message yeah it is showing box. wait um, brew maven like java version 1.8 it is showing for you 1.8 uh, but yeah, one point. Th that's the newer version. Like I updated the Java. No, Java version is 22 at latest. One point it is outdated. No, no. JDK is different. Java version is different now. Yesterday I got JDK to 21 version. Okay, JDK 21 means you'll use JDK 21 only. <laughs> there won't be 1.8 in Eclipse. When you use, you have to change that things actually. So when you use, okay, when you use the MVN version. Yeah, it's fine. When you use MVN hyphen version, this is the command you got. This is absolutely fine. Okay. Okay. GD. And oh. Java, you have installed 1.8. When there are multiple Java compilers, this might be an issue. If no, uh, JDK, for Java version, it's uh, wait. For example, I have to uh, in terminal when I type Java space version, it gives me a version of Java, right? Uh, so I'm just copy pasting. You see, you will be able to understand better now. Okay. So when I put Java okay. C Maybe. dot version, it gives Java C version as 21. That is JDK okay, version. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah I got it. And when I give Java version, it's giving runtime 1.8.0. That one. Okay, I'll just share you my screen how it comes for me in Windows, so that you'll understand. When I say Java version, 
Okay. You did it. Comes it from me. Okay. It's okay. Fine. Fine. It's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, this, it will work actually. That's not a problem. And Maven path is also set automatically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then. Like when I say MVN hyphen version, this will be the thing for me. Okay. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, Sancha, go ahead. Uh, regards the course, what framework, I mean, you are going to cover, uh, Rahul? I mean, I didn't go for the course content. Uh, yeah, we will be covering hybrid framework and data-driven. Sorry? Hybrid and data-driven. Okay. I mean, Cucumber, uh, these things you are going to cover? Yes. Yes, yes, you can check the course plan in the website. Cucumber is, Kukumbar is cover, also right? covering. Yeah, yeah, Cucumber we are covering. That's BDD framework, right? So there's a thing in the market. BDD and TDD are testing approaches. They are not your frameworks. Okay. Hybrid I don't framework. Know exact things because I no, was I'm a just, just I'm clearing the confusion. 99% will say BDD framework. And TDD framework. So BDD and TDD are your testing approaches. Cucumber and TestNG are your libraries. Hybrid framework, data driven framework, this comes under your framework components. Okay. Uh, I mean, what framework you are going to cover? Uh, Hybrid framework, uh, data driven framework using TestNG, Cucumber. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 So anyone else has any doubts? If nothing, you can drop. Oh, thank you. Thank you.